All right, so your your quick evening story. <laughs> Yesterday, I got pissed off because uh, a few weeks ago, I uh, did my homework before going to see Godzilla vs. Uh, Kong. And by homework, I mean I watched the other three movies. And uh, for the life of me, I couldn't find my copy of Godzilla. And so I thought, wow, maybe I just never bought Godzilla or... I lent it to a friend and never got it back, but I could have sworn I had it. And I looked for it like four or five different times. I couldn't find it, so I bought a new copy. <laughs> Yesterday, my boss and I are, are messaging, and she mentioned something about black holes. And I was like, uh, yeah, I need to watch Interstellar again. <laughs> so I go to Cloud Interstellar, and bam, I practically bit my face off. There's Godzilla. <clears throat> so now I have copies of Godzilla. <laughs> That's, I thought you're gonna put. It, say you went and put it, went to put it in a safe place, and found it in a safe place. <laughs> so, so I decided to pull out all of my movies. <clears throat> I separated out TV shows, anime, and movies. That's good enough for you know breaking out the groupings. But then I alphabetized all of my movies. <clears throat> That's too much. And if I take just the movies beginning with the word the and the s's and i stack them that stack is taller than me at six foot three <laughs> <laughs> but the important thing is you found it at least yeah well i found it but like i said now i have two copies at least one is only a blu-ray and the other one's a 4k so there you go you've upgraded Yep, I'll give someone the Blu-ray. And... <clears throat> but in the process of um, alphabetizing, I found that I also had two copies of Man of Steel. <laughs> oh, well. You're keeping them in business. <laughs> and in this day and age where DVDs are, you know, super cheap, it's not super like cheap. the old... $50 VHS days. Yeah, it's only the 30 to $40 4K days. <laughs> yeah, which one was I looking at the other day? It's like $37. Huh. Yesterday's more specifically. And then when you buy the 3D copy, it gets even more pricey. Right. So where last we left off on, you guys were off the planet, but not leaving the planet, right? There's that tropical Naboo music. I'm going to say, what? Are, what? <laughs> we're, we're, we were headed to the, 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 the main capital city mm -hmm. to see if we could get a uh, cargo job off planet, you know. A paying gig to pay yeah. for the gas. Exactly, yeah. you know. And unbeknownst to us, as we were leaving, what's-his-face was blabbing to the Black Sun about how I whipped out my lightsaber. <laughs> oh, because somebody had to roll a despair. Well, see, I was I thinking that and then the secret smuggler's compartments of your ship. There's like a baby reef monster swimming around in the pool. <laughs> no, in their ship, not ours. Oh, no, it snuck aboard. Not past uh, the battle droid, it didn't. <laughs> You said nothing about tadpoles. <laughs> Yay! Hey, we're, we're we're sitting in a nice, solid, half light, half dark balance. I like that. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> let, oh, let me let me screw that up here. <laughs> Brazil is thirty five dollars, and it's not even four K. It's just a regular blue. Ooh. <laughs> we kept the balance. Good job, guys. Good job. All right. 
Look at all those points. So uh, you guys are basically heading to the capital city. You know, it, com command and control has no problem giving you guys, you know, hey, you want clearance to go to the command city? You can totally go to the command city. So uh, what uh, business do you tell them that you're doing? The business of none their business? Uh, none ya. <laughs> trade <laughs> okay facilitation <'cause>, <laughs> okay i mean when you say trade they have like you know hey we've got you know job postings if you if you want to give us some more details we can help you out but you know if you want to be all vaggy mcvagans and i'll just let uh spaceport control know and they'll they'll want to talk to you in person well, basically, uh, we uh, uh, dropped off our items and we're looking for more cargo to send, to take off world, you know, to, just to make the trip more worth it. Okay. And, and you're totally going, you know, just looking for legit, right? Yeah. It does. Be... Of course. Yeah, of course. We're legit traders. Okay. We're legit. <laughs> Until we're not. <laughs> we so got what, 20 last time, right? What's that? I'm sorry, what? We got 20 experience this yep. time, right? Yeah. Because you okay. had that big damn heroic wrap up. Yeah, yeah. With a nice briefcase full of money. Yeah, I was just looking. I'm like, wait, I did not spend that. <laughs> I spent some of mine from the last couple sessions. I decided to up my stealth. <laughs> Sometimes it's good not to be seen. Exactly. So of well, course, my... Og dude's is off, so Og dude's doesn't have the class shit in it, which is annoying. Oh, the... it updated? The the special class, like, you know, the two special, like, specific class skills. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some reason they don't have those loaded. So I got, like, 40 experience sitting that I can't spend in Og Dudes, but I got to remember that it's spent on that skill. <laughs> or that tree. Send him a ticket, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I need to. Because <laughs> that should be in there, man. <laughs> Anywho, sorry, go ahead. So uh, what skill is uh, Uma going to look use to look for a job? Computers. Oh, I'm afraid you'd say that. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and uh, as you totally you want him that. to go up to the you know job board and say, "Find us a job." You ready? Yep. <laughs> yeah, because that's gonna help. <laughs> Damn! I was at Woo least hoping for a despair. <laughs> He used that triumph to declare that he the, too. Uh, Black Sun uh, thinks that what's his face was totally full of shit when he was talking about the lightsaber. <laughs> well, well, this is for a legit job. Yeah. Well, this is unrelated to the last not legit job. Yeah, but that despair had nothing to do with, with me being a Jedi. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> So, Janong, oh, you have Janong. lots of stuff there. Yeah. Where are we at again? You are at the capital city of Naboo. It's this beautiful waterfall covered mosaic little, you know, old. Oh, well, then it had been easier anyway. Or, no. Yeah. So, um, uh, we get the best of the easiest of the best job I right think now. Jobs. <laughs> and you should totally check your dice pool, by the way, because apparently it looks like you may have added a purple that I didn't put there. Yeah, uh, uh, 
I just had two two purple, one which was upgraded. Yeah, there's just two purple. Oh, sorry, I scrolled up. I mean, uh, another dice. One purple, dice one, one red. Yep. <laughs> wow. I, w I was looking at the dice roll that had the despair on it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so so yeah, you have time. lots of options. I mean, there's lots of good paying jobs. What is it specifically that Janong is looking for is the question. High pay and, you know, the highest paying, easiest run. Yeah, I mean... And I already, we already won. We already did it. That's what the triumph's for. <laughs> okay, so you have you have passage booked for three three folks that want to be taken off world and taken over to the next planet you guys want to go to, which is see how I throw that out there. It's exactly where you want to go with that triumph. Where do you want to go? Is the question. I like how you're all dead silent. Well, it's not like our characters have motivation to go to a specific planet. We we want to avoid hut space. We want to avoid imperial space. Black Sun and Republic is okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm game. I'm wherever the boss says, man. And you said you wanted to take cargo that's in the same direction you're going to go. So that leaves me asking the same question. Where is it you guys want to go? Uh, I'm working with which boundaries you guys gave me, see. I mean, are you guys wanting to go to, to Coruscant and see the capital? I mean... Corellia. I hear Corellia is nice this time of year. Coruscant's Fine, let's better. go to Corellia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody have anything in their backstories that would uh, they want to resolve or No, not really I mean, Things to avoid, but not <laughs> Yeah Okay, so uh, yeah, let's let's go to Corellia. Okay, so you guys are you know loading up and heading to Corellia. Conveniently, Janong did his uh, travel guide booking on the uh, <laughs> you you name it vacation trip here of the, of the Airbnb uh, cargo ships. So you have three nice, well-paying customers that want to go to the same place with with average amounts of luggage, and they probably won't take up too much space and probably not be too much of a pain in the ass because uh, there's there's a bunch of advantages there to make sure that they're a, a nice, pleasant family. Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah. Well, family, sure. what are we talking about? Family. Uh, I'm actually talking a mother, a father, and a child. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Are there eggs involved? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's funny. And you guys are wanting to go to Corellia. Sure. Um, sure. I don't yeah, know that let's I do it. have... Have I been? Let's I don't think I've been. So why not? Okay. And uh, John, if you uh, set the astrogation. Oh, okay. Are we ready for that? So you guys pick up your guests. They're waiting there with their luggage. They're super polite. They're super nice. They're like, oh, this ship is quaint. As they get hey, on. This is a nice ship. That's what wow. means. It, it was more <laughs> of they were tent. expecting to be given uh, warm towels and champagne when they got on the ship. No, this isn't. Oh, a we could give them warm sorry. champagne and cold towels. 
Instead, <laughs> it's it's rather cramped, and there's War. a bet there's a warbot in the cargo hold. Yeah, but well, you know, for a good, he looks yeah, friendly. For a reasonable price, we do have special in-flight drink. <laughs> I mean, they're more than welcome to wait for a uh, non-existent, you know, space yacht. They're not complaining. I'm just saying they were expecting at least, you know, a dr- beverage on getting on the ship. Well, for a price, they, they know where have. the refresher is. <laughs> we would have given them a short tour. Sure, you could sell a bottle of Crown and whiskey to them for a good price. I mean, <laughs> they are paying you 5,000 and 500 credits for this ride, so. Wow. That's just for the ride. Didn't say refreshments were included. <laughs> wow. They have, they have mean, they access have to the standard. refresher. Yeah. They have access to the canteen and the refresher, so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, on travel is about 2,000 credits, and we're giving them the, the one child discount of 500 credits, so. <laughs> Yeah. So nobody's thing came up? No. Nope. Is that what that role was? That, that's what that 89 was, that nobody's obligations came into play. All right. You guys Yay. have been lucking out on that one since you killed the last obligation. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Thanks, deserved it. I'm just still dreading the, the gank showing up. <laughs> all of a sudden, there's a they, they all pull off their masks and they're all ganks. <laughs> what uh, um, species are they? Human? Uh, they're all you know, very nice humans. You know, you they obviously seem to be you know just from appearances' sake come from money. Okay. The fact that they had no questions asked for this ride, they're like, yeah, here's here's five thousand credits and and five hundred for the processing fee. Yeah, and uh, um. Okay, uh... So, Janon. As uh, Uma is flying the ship out of out of orbit, right? Mm-hmm. Go ahead and give me your astrogation check. Ew. Damn, you clicked as I was talking, didn't you? Oh, no, that's good. I was looking at the... Go ahead and give me my dark side back, since I didn't get to put the upgrade in there for you. Yeah. <laughs> You said go. <laughs> you I was said gonna, go. I was in the midst of clicking as I was talking as well. Good timing, sir. Good good luck for you. <laughs> you said give me a roll. <laughs> as you know for a fact that this trip's going to take about eight days because you got to kind of do this little hop, skip, and a jump thing, you know. Thankfully, you're managing to shave that down to about six days. Okay. So is there anything special you guys are doing so it's more than just a screen swipe of six days? Yeah. Uh, Wait, no. You already put that on, right? Okay. Yeah. What are we talking about? Uh, well, I was trying to... I was thinking mods but that you're not going to work on, but... <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to refresh the game window because my character sheet just jacked up. Yeah. There we go. I was trying to bring up my backstory. I know I've got around here somewhere. Because I ironically said Corellia, and I think I'm from Corellia. Ah, ah, there we go. I mean, the Corellian sector is a big area. Yeah. It is one of the core worlds. Right? Mm-hmm. Probably a bunch of Jedi there and shit, too. <laughs> Maybe you have family. Uh, I was actually ostracized by my my family. Ah, okay. Um, they they didn't approve of. Uh, so I, I was from a work, fairly well to do family, and my cousin didn't approve of me having Jedi powers, and so he did some stuff to make sure that. No longer accepted by the family. Ah, that sucks. 
Okay, well, you and Zarek have a lot in common, then. <laughs> <laughs> You're both ostracized. Okay. Uma collects foundlings, that's all. That's I was all. more disgraced, but... Tomato, tomato. <laughs> so should I do a piloting roll? Uh, no, it's it's fairly easy. Space lines are basically open up, and they're just like, hey, just follow the buoys. Don't deviate from that path. And super easy path to fly. Yeah. Excellent. Which brings me back to my previous question. Is there anything special you guys are wanting to do? Um, are there any upgrades for the ship that we want to do while we're on Corelli? Corellia? Sure. Or anybody else need any specific? I don't think I do. I know there's stuff we wanted to do the, to the ship, though, so... Yeah, um, I just can't remember what they were. Upgrading the cannons to, like, massive heavy 15 damage cannons? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, not that expensive. Oh, okay. There, there's a couple places in Hut Space you could totally do that. Yeah. Except like for that. certain people in our party really would prefer to avoid Hut Space. Gotta yeah. do what we gotta do, but, you know, I'd rather not. Wow, okay. I could have sworn at one point I wrote this whole character backstory and now it's completely gone. Cool. <clears throat> you didn't put it on your bio tab? I could have sworn I did, but it's not there anymore. <laughs> oh no. Bizarre. Check the notes tab. I looked at notes already too. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. That's okay. I know they're just a bit. If I want to, I can write it all up again. And thankfully, these citizens of Corellia are wanting to go to uh, Coronet City, the nice industrial capital of the city, of the planet. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Uh, is anyone going to socialize with them or talk to them? Or... Yeah, you know, I'll... No. Yeah, they can. Out. I'm sure we'll have dinners sure. together. Keep an eye on them. David. Be social. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like <laughs> every cruise ship likes to have dinner with the captain. Right uh, there, you go. It's an honor. <laughs> like Firefly, like uh -huh. you know, meals are this ah, time, exactly. this time. Everyone I'll needs to play with my lightsaber. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Here, kid, check this just out. Give it to the right? kid. Just, <laughs> just don't point it at your mother. But but look down the front of it. It's really cool looking. Right? <laughs> you can yeah. almost see the the gems sparkle. Oh <laughs> uh, shit! So with her smuggler's uh, trench coat, can I try and reverse engineer it? Um, not really. It's not like an armor kind of thing. It's just a really nice custom trench coat. Really. Says I can. What does it say? It says I can reverse engineer it and give it one hard point, and then I can install jump boots. And how are you going to install a hard, hard point, point into a coat that doesn't have a hard point? Hey, this is Star Wars, okay? I it's... shoot the lock and the door opens. I shoot the lock and the door closes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's like Sweet. the Looking Kevlar vests and stuff that have the plates. Yeah. I mean, You're you can say no. That's fine. I get it. I mean, you know, hey, if Janong wants to try his hand at tailoring, I mean, uh, go go for it. It's it's just an average roll, right? Uh, yeah, should be. How does reverse engineering work? Well, so it's one of those like, uh, if I reverse engineer, it just it gives it one hard point. Um, chart 71. I don't have chart 71. Yeah. Build it Page in. 71. Uh, 
Okay, so Uma's relinquished her coat to uh, Chenong to go ahead and tinker with. Sure. And that, yeah, that's if she wants him. to. I know, I trust him. That's, uh, what would the jump boots stuff? do? Uh, so reverse engineering would put one hard point on it, and then we could give you jump boots, and then if you ever fell, you would never die. Ah. See, auto land softly. That that's good because my athletics is is you're just one yellow. <laughs> so down how you put jump boots on a jacket. Well, but... no, it's two separate things he's talking about. <laughs> so he's talking about giving the armor a hard point and uh, building her jump boots. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah. That seemed like what. Yeah, it's just well, that's what, why, he's excited when he's explaining it. That's why it sounds like it's one thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's like in the Ogmans or in the character generation thing. Mm -hmm. Ogdudes, yeah. Yeah, it says that you can, I can install a helmet communication, a multiband, or I can reverse engineer. Reverse engineer adds one hard point to the mod. Okay. So I add that, and then after that, it comes up with a list of the uh, like hard point things that I can do. Yeah, well, so you're basically it's adding stuff into it. It is a trench coat, so like you know, yeah, it's got to it be armor. trench coat related. Further reduces the difficulty of athletics check made to jump or jump or over obstacles. Okay, so go for your uh, first mechanics check for reverse engineering. All right. Yeah, so you're trying to add jump boots to, like, laminate, which makes sense, but I don't know that... Remember, this yeah, is just well, a it's trench It's an coat. option on Og dudes, so... Well, Whatever. Uh, Og dudes does have its limits. Remember, it can't put your custom <laughs> skills on it. <laughs> No, yeah. like like adding kurtosis weave, that would be that would be totally cool. Yeah, that would be something or custom fit or custom fit didn't show up. Uh, does when I pull up smuggler jacket, right? Or trench coat? Mm -hmm, the smuggler trench coat. Oh, sorry. I'm. It's got my. Sorry, I was still. Link to my heavy battle armor. <laughs> uh, it's like you can totally do all this to your heavy battle armor. Yeah, I know. I know. I just I have to. All right, then. Do you want. All right. Uma. What do you want? Do you want me to add like a custom fit which removes one black from athletics and stealth checks? Okay, so ceremonial. So with reverse engineering, multi band comm link, hidden compartment. Helmet, comlink, well, it already has it in compartments because it's a smuggler. Yeah, it already has it. Well, these are what attachments come up, come up for Og dudes. Um, well, ceremony adornment would be cool. <laughs> so that it just makes removes, it pretty? <laughs> no, removes two black from social skill checks due to wearer's armor in social, socially inappropriate situations and adds a black to coordination. Oh. Coordination check, so it's all clunky looking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. You've then, got that because my coordination is pretty low. Um, or I can put in an uh, Omni scanner, which is a built-in, built-in general purpose scanner. Adds a blue to your perception checks okay, to detect and movement or hidden enemies. Uh that that sounds good. Okay, mm. there we go. Once I add uh, one. Hard point, then I can see more options here. So you want the Omni? Yeah. Okay. That'll be a thousand dollars. He's like, open up that briefcase. Well, it's just what it costs. It, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, it's funny the jump boots does come up for that, which is makes no sense. Um, on the jacket, can you but... put the Omni scanner details in the chat? Yeah, I was getting ready to do that. Thank you. Oh, 
That part didn't go through, though. It's supposed to be adds a blue dye. No, well, that's the little box, but yeah. Yeah. Hey, Joe, did we ever do anything to that Sith laminate armor that I, I got? Um, we did a lot of stuff to your armor. Yeah, I thought we. I thought you did. Yeah, we. Well, made I don't it. think it was the Sith one, was it? No, I'm pretty sure it was the Sith one. I yeah, know we it was the, your latest one. Yeah, it was the latest one, and I'm pretty sure we did the superior armor customization, custom fit, and low friction coating. I just never put them into my character yeah. sheet. I just have the notes in a separate notepad file for some reason. Because <laughs> yeah, you guys completed all those mods. Yeah, and I thought we talked about changing the, uh, the the stylizing and the coloring of the armor, too. And I was like, ooh, we'll do like this maroon and gray kind of thing. Because <clears throat> I remember while we were playing, I was sitting there forever trying to change the <laughs> colors on this image that I had found. And I was like, hey, this looks about right. And I was in Paint Shop Pro trying to recolor it. And every time I copied it and pasted it, the colors got all screwed up. So it's like finally like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll put these notes in here then. So what kind of money, where are we, where's, what's our, like, monetary value, where we're sitting at? Like, uh, Well, um, minusing the thousand credits to uh, mod my uh, coat, we're at 90,831. <laughs> Holy That's cow. not counting the five thousand five hundred we'll be getting for this drop right. off. That's like just like in the pool, no payouts anywhere, right? So okay. Somebody's yeah. looking for oh. his payday. Well, you know, so, you know potential <laughs> paychecks out of all that, you know, it'd be nice. I mean we got ship and stuff to do, but you know. <laughs> I'm just uh, glad you didn't buy the cheap protein paste. <laughs> Okay, I did have them in there, and they were on the Sith armor. I just had to view the attachments. I didn't put them in features and qualities. So, and yeah, it was superior armor, custom fit, low friction. Because he's she's smooth. Yep. Okay, so as you guys, you know, you pop out of hyperspace, the navigation was right spot on. It's 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 Corellia, you know, it's 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 a very popular place to be, you know, Old Republic. It's very industrious. It's got things going. It's nice and civilized. It's, it's a prime example of how a core world should be managed in the perfect balance between nature and modern comforts of living. And of course, your your customers want to be dropped off at the capital city because that's where they've got business to do, because, you know. As small talk has told you, the, the the you know middle management in the industrial sector, you know, they've been doing some moonlighting on Naboo for contracts, you know, get supplies and things brought out, and they're just back from the working business trip. <laughs> of course they are, and of course you know they're high flown. Did what I could to make them as comfortable, considering our accommodations. <laughs> It's more fun when you have to sleep on top of cargo crates. Well, you know, it's an adventure. I'm sure the kid loved it. Mm -hmm. Got to go <laughs> rough it. You know, first he went to go roughing it, got to go fishing with his dad, and now he's on a uh, sm a cargo smuggling ship evading space pirates. At least that's from the kid's point of view. Well, so he's lucky that when he was fishing with his dad that the fish didn't eat them. Oh no, that's it's a totally one of those tourist trap fishing trips. So as you guys are coming to Corellia, you know, it's it's standard, you know, Republic fare, the command and control as soon as you get within, you know, the gravity wall of the planet asks you, "Hey, name, rank and serial number of your ship and uh what's what's your reason for coming?" Who is your daddy and what does he do? We are dropping off passengers. That sounds good too. Sorry. 
Excellent. And they basically ask for which which city or spaceport do you have preference for? Or just the next one in the queue? <laughs> well, I guess unless the uh unless the passengers had something specific, the next one in queue is fine. Uh, okay. they wanted to go to Cornet, so Okay, so anything uh, particular before you guys get ready to start heading down and landing? No. Okay, and, and immediately the command and control guy, you know, goes ahead and uh, what is the your name that you're giving him, by the way, as the captain of the ship? Um, Natma. Natma, okay. All right, Captain Nathma, thank you very much. Your position's coming up in exactly 37 seconds. And if you'd please express my uh, heartfelt welcome, uh, Mr. Manx should have drinks ready for him at the cantina. I'm sorry, excuse me? A a and he just kind of abruptly uh, says, Command and Control out, click. You never did change the uh, black box. <clears throat> uh, this is a different ship. Uh, well, no, Janong no, did the is... whole. Janong did, did the we... whole. Uh... Redo the transponder on this one. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I did. He has the option to change it. Yeah, whenever um... I want. Because <laughs> how well I rolled. It's almost like did. I asked you guys twice if there's anything special you're doing. Yeah. And we didn't change it, just it's rewired to be able to. Yeah, but we, yeah. Never, no, we changed it, and I can change it whenever I want to. But you didn't say you did. <laughs> That's what he was working, feeding for. Right, but we previously changed it, and we haven't changed it since we previously changed it. No, we haven't it. done anything oh, illegal to get us in trouble since then. It's not like we would There's have gotten no reason to change it. Ship. It just means that on this planet that's very predominant among smuggling, the ship has been identified. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's fine. Yes, it is. It's fine. It Let just me means it. that Max regularly, you know, appreciates when they have a special drink ready for him, and he pays extra to make sure that when he comes, he gets a pretty quick cue. Sure. Nothing else could go wrong there. It's fine. Yeah, no. yeah. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so you guys, you know, whoosh, you, you, you guys landing? Yes. It's a nice little hundred credit. Oh, we're going to ODST them into the planet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can totally get drop armor to do just that. Right. <laughs> Re-entry landing not guaranteed. Okay, so you guys pull into the spaceport. It's a really nice little looking ritzy one, you know. You basically get the uh the package upgrade notification coming through. Between uh, Uma's paranoia and the fact that there's a pre, a, a prepaid upgrade on, <laughs> on your spaceport oh, wow. package, there we go. It, it, oh, it will be a hundred credits because apparently the auto account isn't charging correctly. <laughs> See, look at that first class service. It's all right. Enjoy it. So, Uma, <sighs> will you? Uh, Shoot them a hundred credits for your spaceport. Yes. Okay. You put your your data stick in the console, and you see a hundred credits disappear. Make sure you mark it off as you I'm... land, and you have a really nice landing pad. It's got a couple cleaning bots already ready to clean the outside of your ship. You know, all of a sudden, an options package pops up if you'd like to get a paint job on the ship. You know. If there's any pre-programmed art you'd like stenciled on the outside of the ship. No, I'm just... Are you requiring any detailing <laughs> service, service on the inside? You know, all these little pop-up advertisements. No. 
we're good. And, and would you like you them to queue up a uh, nice cab for your passengers that are disembarking? Uh, that would be polite. Yeah, sure. Okay, and they basically give you this like little five minute countdown clock that uh, the air cab will come by to pick them up in exactly that many minutes. So you've landed in this this nice like third story nice little lily pad landing pad that's all private to yourselves. Beautiful I weather. Hope I load their stuff. I helped unload their luggage. Sounds like someone finally made them a beverage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and they, you know, of course, you know, Dorson's totally like, thank you so much. This was a pleasure. It was, it was a unique experience. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, pleasure doing business with you. We'll make sure to refer any of our friends that are needing some uh, quick, luxurious uh, transportation. And he kind of mockingly says the luxurious. <laughs> As all of a sudden your ship starts hissing some some reserved gas. Hey, this is like a brand new ship. It is a brand new ship. <laughs> well, it's been used a little bit now. <laughs> it is, but even Just the good ones snitch. occasionally relieve pressure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know. He's talking crap. It's a it's a good practically like off the showroom floor ship. <laughs> Fell off the delivery truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so of course, you know, the, the air cab shows up just just right on time. And of course, you know, they, they pack their luggage and brrr, jets in the off, you know. So what are you guys doing? What is well, your plan? Obviously, this has been a uh, hot spot for Manx, so I'm very uncomfortable. Um, but does uh, anybody have any uh, thing that they want to do um, while they're here on the planet? Or shall we have Janong start searching for uh, um, another job? Well, I mean, depends on what our potential paycheck might be <laughs> so Janong if you want to search the systems again to see if there's any uh, uh, jobs of interest and you're just looking for legit uh... well we're we're good with legit, but we can always take non if uh, if it's worth our uh, attention. So you don't want to look at mods here for the ship. Yeah, I mean, I'm know. not exactly I mean, comfortable with uh, doing oh, it in the okay. port that Manx is. Okay. That his sh former ship. Uh, is well known at. Although, um, we could look at uh, um, upgrades to the battlements the, or the, the, the artillery. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they have on this type of a planet for that kind of stuff, but... Well, this is a core world. I'm sure we got government yep. regulation. Right. So if we want something a little uh, extra, we'll probably have to go elsewhere. Could be. Well, Uma, about... why don't you give me a uh, Streetwise or a Underworld? Uh, okay, hold on. What do we know about cybernetics on this planet? I know a lot about cybernetics. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He attended that conference. Said, 
Underworld or... Or Streetwise. We're going to go Streetwise. You ready? Yep. Okay, so Janong, basically, you know, limited amount of jobs out there right now. It's almost like smuggler ships are coming in and out every five minutes on this planet. <laughs> and uh, Uma, also only one job that really pops up, but what do you guys want to use those advantages for? Um, stay off the radar for anybody who might be looking for Manx. Okay. And what about Janong with all those advantages? I was going to say something along the same lines, but and then I was going to give her or the next person with some blues, but. <laughs> so for three of your advantages, your, your, your web searches through the legitimate trading companies is, is pretty much super discreet. You know, no trucker guilt unions coming after you for trying to, to scab their jobs. <laughs> So let's see. So what? What's your mechanics and doctoring? Um. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Doctoring. I've got two gold, four green. Mechanics. I got four gold, two green. Mm. And in medicine, I get two blue. Mm. Okay. But I mean, that's my that's my skill I took as a cybernetics, as a cyber tech. So like, I'm All about right. to give myself a ton of upgrades. <laughs> okay. Well, I just yeah, I've been looking at some of the potential cybernetics. That's why I was like, depending on what our payday is and where we're at, I did a couple things I'm kind of looking at. And what are you looking at? Well, it'd range from 10K down to about 3K, depending. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, if if uh, you wanted to go out spending cash, this is a fairly nice place to spend cash. I mean, it does have CD Underworld that's pretty easy to get in touch with, and it also has all the nice civilized planet amenities. What yeah, is so it? Like I mean, Earth. if you okay. want to get something... We've had some pretty lucrative uh, jobs, so yeah. we can put we can put a cyber cavity in you. No, so why don't you guys discuss how you're spending cash while your GM goes and takes a quick fire break? There you go. Yeah, is that looking between like cyber arm for you know, plus one or an upgrade to agility, um, or? Um, what was the other one I was looking at? Um, I think you do a leg too for agility. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, that might be better just because of then I wouldn't have to mess with my repulsor fist, but so, and eventually I need to do a biofeedback regular, which is actually only 3K, because the biofeedback gives me, it it basically, um, like a spinal uh, implant, basically it adds two additional cyber cap mod, because right now I get, uh, I can have six points in cybernetics, I'm at five of six right now, so basically that would increase my cap by two. So I'd be able to get two more cybernetic implants, plus um, it doesn't count as part of that cap mod. Um, and then it, uh, yeah, you only get one of those per person. So, so yeah, basically it allows me to become more cybernetic. <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, which one do you want? Because, I mean... We we did over seven thousand for Alina. We did the six hundred for you, and we did the uh, uh, like four fifty credit for the uh, medical backpack. So 
Yeah. You're due for a upgrade. <laughs> I got to keep my gank in good work and order. That's with the credits. Those are some... Yeah, leg wouldn't be bad because then wouldn't have to. Because I'm sure we'd end up having to make an additional roll to add, you know, to take the. Yeah, for the repulsor. Repulsor off. Yeah, but I, I fixed them so good, I actually get like one or two blues. So either way, I can cut your leg off or legs. Oh shit! No, well, let's see. Wait a minute. We have oh, Doctor Kavorkian too to help. One, exactly. One, one. We have the. We have Dr. Kevorkian. All we have to do is just buy the mod. We can have Dr. Kevorkian put it on you. Uh-huh. And then I yeah. can assist him if it... Or he can assist me with okay. whoever would have a better die roll. Well, the legs, though... Actually, the limbs will be cost prohibitive. You have to replace both to get the... To get a bonus. Yeah. So it'd be twenty. Yeah, but it's 10000 for two. I don't think it's 10000 for uh... one. Um, I think it's red as both. I think, that way people I think that, yeah, do. because otherwise. So. Cybernetic yeah, leg. You don't, get, yeah. you don't get two bonuses. You only get one bonus. Right, but it's cybernetic leg, mod three, cybernetics, 10K. Note that cybernet, cyber legs, legs must be purchased as a pair. Mod two several legs for I plus one, Ron, while so why the, if games, that's the case. Have both legs. Because yeah. people get a single arm or leg cut off all the time. So is it ten thousand for one and twenty thousand for the two? That's way... because you have to do both to get the bonus. Exactly. That's what it says. The wear must have both legs replaced to receive bonus to his characteristics. We can cut them off, bro. We can cut them off. Well, it's just that'd be two twenty k though. Uh, it looks like for the ten k that is for both. It is. Yeah, it is. Okay. So okay. See, why don't they call it cybernetic legs then? <laughs> and then it would be simple. So, but the way it's worded, I would assume the other. But I'll take it for ten. Yeah. Okay. So. so uh... Spin. And I've got a lightsaber, so. And there's a handy dandy there's link a... to a bunch of the cybernetic stuff online. I'm looking at the Og dudes, but I don't know if that's more stuff, but. Or is that the, like, how to go through I the roles to mod? I think this list has actually the ciphers and spies stuff added to it, too. Mm. Okay, well, I'm deducting the 10K. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. The scary part's just having Janong. So uh, you're having Janong do it? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Well, so if I go somewhere it's... and pay in town, it's all done without it's any problem. It's 10K right? and... Yep. Okay, yeah, well then. But Janong could potentially improve the process. <laughs> right? With rolls? Uh-huh. Let's see. Are you willing to take the chances? No, yeah, I, just... we can have Kavorkian help me. <laughs> you still got. You're only two gold, though. Yeah, that's, but the 10K basically also counts for the expertise in that type of procedure. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, the chance for extras is nice, but at the same time, I just. You Scared know, cat. Scared <laughs> cat. I am. Two gold, still a little much. It's, it's my legs, man. So well, yeah, I can, if we bump, can, find I can bump it up. Would the three or four gold be adequate for you? <laughs> I've got points that I haven't I'm spent okay. that I've been saving for something else. But I mean, if it's to help the team, I'll be more than willing to help the team. That's okay. I'll, I'll deal with. I mean, <laughs> the plus one agility is good enough as a guarantee. So. So yeah, we'll find a place. <laughs> okay, I uh, good because I I made a note that we and and deducted it from the total. So just to rub it in, go ahead and do the roll and see how good you would have done. <laughs> <laughs> and now remember, the ten k is basically just for your basic limbs. If you're wanting the plus, that's a little extra. 
No, it's 10K in for the, the cybernetic threes. At least on, unless you're charging more for the planet or something. Cybernetic, it's not a, just a cybernetic limb. Those are cheap. This is oh, okay. the what cybernetic, you... cybernetic leg mod three. Mod 3 gives the plus 1 to agility. The mod 2 gives uh, strength. I would have been okay. Yeah. Actually, the advantage, you could have added probably stuff. Yep. Oh. Yeah. If it's only a... Then I totally right, would have though. flipped the dark side. It would have gone south quick, and oh yeah, there all of a sudden you had a, no, table. You had no, a third leg. No, if he was going to be doing it, I would have flipped the light side point automatically just to ensure <laughs> that nothing happened to Zarek. Yeah, it would have it been a gimp. So one thing I am going to ask hop. about uh, your cybernetics there. Now, are you going to a commercial cyber shop, which which there are plenty of? Or are you going to an underground chop shop? <laughs> For 10000 you better be going commercial. Yeah, I mean, you know, I want to make it right. These are my legs. Okay. So, yeah, so, so I'm just checking good. because, you know, you know, commercial means you have to actually check in and they basically are all legal and all that good stuff. I, I don't have any real record or anything. I just don't get along with other gangs or the huts. Yeah, it's, it's perfectly okay. Which would to probably be right. get me more in trouble in the chop shop. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a good point. They'd be like, hey, it might be worth uh, snitching you out then and getting you in no, 10K. They probably don't see a lot of gangs in the main line, you know, showing uh -huh. up on this planet going and getting cybernetics here. But they're like, I'm holy hell. I get to operate on a gank? That That is like prestige. Right? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me check something here. Okay, no, never mind. Go ahead. So, yeah. So, I'll go mainline. Okay. So, so they will basically get your information. Your, your cybernetics are registered. Yada, yada, yada. The usual stuff. You know, you've got a nine-day warranty. Just don't do anything strenuous to them. Nine-day warranty. <laughs> wow, they're so generous. <laughs> well, there there is the gank clause that causes you to immediately lose 41 days of your warranty because you're a gank. Because <laughs> they know what we do. <laughs> you can't but come a, back after shoving that leg up someone's ass and have it fixed, you know. But I'm a born-again gank. Don't mind the weapons. I, I, I don't do this <laughs> stuff anymore. <laughs> Born-again, that's great. <laughs> okay, so... so uh, we've got Zarek with, with brand-new shiny legs. Sexy. <laughs> you know, it's got this nice fishnet texture built into it. So did anybody else decide on getting anything special? I'm already pretty decked out, so. And I just got the Omni Scanner, so. So your smuggler uh, coat has an Omni Scanner built into it. Mm-hmm. Like, here you guys are with... Ask access. Kevorkian on, uh, and R3 if they need... <laughs> right? You don't want to mob them, or you don't, have, you don't need some kind of techie equipment or something? I mean, immediately, your astromech's like, I need a... Uh, I need one of these. And... <laughs> I totally can use a, a weapons upgrade. <laughs> now nah, we'll just have Janong make sure he hey, they 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 get a uh, oil bath and uh, overhaul. Not mine, not wiped or anything, but you know tune ups. I also totally want one of these. Yeah, don't don't talk to Jim about getting wiped. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Our poor Jedi will have to pay for that one for a while. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're if we're doing it, I mean. Oh, here we go. Does he want? What does he want? 
he's wanting the appraiser's eye and an escape circuit. Basically, it lets him immediately appraise the value of things being bought or sold. And the escape circuit lets him uh, most likely get out of a restraining bolt if one's put on him. Yep. You know, for Uma's security, I mean, this rare thing that you'll probably have to find some underground chop shop to do, but will totally mean if your ship is ever captured and they restraining bolt him, he can break free to rescue Uma. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Why would you want yeah, to that's... rescue Uma when I'm his buddy? Hey, I'm the one who rescued him in the first place. See, who see how this she works? Flies. The R3 unit. Oh, oh, I thought we were no, talking not about Kevorkian. Kevorkian. Sorry. <laughs> oh, the R3, yeah, that's fine. Because he's not restrained Bolt now, is he? Nope. No. Yeah, see, I'm okay I took that. that off of him. But yeah. see, esca an escape circuit will mean he can take it off himself in the future. Yeah, somebody tries to, an Imperial or somebody tries to slap one on him. Yeah. He just has to do they a discipline to... one check to pop it off. He can restraining bolt the restraining bolt. <laughs> <laughs> He's my buddy. Um, how much do they cost? Uh, they cost a thousand credits, but it is a restricted item, which means you're going to have to negotiate to find somebody who'll do it. And now wow. we're going to the Underdark. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think you can do it, but that's just me. Can I roll an Underworld and see if I might be able to find somebody? It's it's definitely within the realm of possibilities. Now, if it's if it's black market, you need to do streetwise. If it's legal, it's yep. negotiation. Well, I'm good at negotiation. <laughs> I'm only passing at uh, Streetwise. I can't use Underworld? Uh, Underworld tells you that it is an illegal item. Streetwise is how you find the chop shop to do it. Yep. Yeah, I got two greens. Uh, yeah, uh, um, for Streetwise. Street what's your Streetwise? I got two yellow, take away two black. Oh, hold on. Mine is, uh, yeah, yours is better than mine. I only have one uh, yellow and two green. And it is only against two purple, by the way, since it's rarity six. We're all good. You don't have to get, like, crazy worried. It's only rarity six. It's just that it's only. restricted. Because he can also pilot the ship. Who's that? R3. Oh, yeah. RC, uh... Um. Rage. <laughs> R8G3. Gave him time. Should have hit it. No, you're thinking of my other droid, sweetheart. I know. All right. Are we ready for the roll? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We can't friend. find any place. Especially for the slave circuit. Apparently that's one of those ones that nobody wants to admit that they slave droids. So having an escape circuit is kind of like a little foreboding. The appraiser's eye, you guys can totally find a places that'll do that. Very often. Well, you can always buy the, the cybernetics and have your, your guy install it. Where is that? I mean, what's the worst that happens? He botches it, and the poor guy's got a ha eye hanging out for a while. <laughs> yeah, but he's not. But the uh, R three unit doesn't leave the ship very often at all. So what I'm why saying would he is, need the appraiser's eye is good for cargo. It's for buying and selling, so he can tell you what the cargo's worth. Ah. He can totally. What do just... you guys think? I mean, you asked the droid what he wanted, and that's what he said. And how much is the, uh... The um, appraiser's eye is only 700. 
Louise. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we? Let's do that. And Jim, did I hear correctly or did I misunderstand? You said we could get the escape circuit. We would just have to have Janong install it. Uh, no, that would be the appraiser's eye. Unfortunately, Zerk doesn't know anybody that would do that highly restricted, illegal, cybernetic creature modification. modification. Right. You can't be doing that kind of stuff to, you know, droids. <laughs> What's next? Giving them free will? Right. Madness. You need a Q22 retinal tracker, too. You need one of those on Prime. <laughs> Provides a uh, advantage on gunnery and ranged heavy checks. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like it's meant to make uh, dual wielding and crits happen. Yep. Actually, that'd be good on uh, your gun uh, Zarkur, too. <laughs> Gets you halfway to dual wielding every time. Right. It's only 2,500. All right. So are we getting that eye for him or no? Yeah. Let's get it. Hell yeah. All right. Okay. So you're going out and having, you know, your, your, your shopaholic pick it up and just you're going to install it when you guys get a chance? Yeah. So, if we're doing the installation ourselves, is it less than 700 Nope. It's totally <laughs> a seller's market. They're like, what are you going to do? Try to install it for somebody else and undercut me? No, no, no. You're paying this price. No workman's comp discount for you. <laughs> That's all right. So what's what's the plan? Well, we're getting the appraiser's eye. Okay. So so you guys basically pulled up the mail order catalog and they're like, deposit and it'll mm -hmm. be delivered within two hours. Yeah, and uh, Janong will install it uh, yeah. at a later so, date. So you don't want to go get a drink while we're waiting? <laughs> yeah, well, supposedly there's a drink waiting. <laughs> We can use a bar. You do, like. Are you interested in doing more gladiatorial work? <laughs> sure. Well, at this point, I'm kind of geared a little bit more towards the agility side than the. Uh, I mean, I'm still melee okay, but. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Alina, how about you? What about me? Uh, anything that you're requiring. Mm, we're not right now. I'm I'm pretty good. My armor and my lightsaber are both upgraded, so Yeah, you're pretty badass. <laughs> okay. Right. Um yeah, so let's let's go uh go to a cantina. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's just pick I mean, Uma, you've been here before. This is this is a smuggler place. I mean <laughs> Okay, uh let's go to uh a cantina that I know of, but didn't frequent as often. There you go. Okay, the weeping rancor it is. <laughs> CD pilot smuggler cantina it is, you know. It's one of those places that you can get a good game of cards in, but uh, nothing really bad ever happens there, except for in the back alley. <laughs> So as you guys basically, you know, going to go hang out at the cantina, get some some drink on, apparently, you, you do notice that there's a lot of Republic, you know, law enforcement walking around doing its thing, but nobody's getting like patted down or arrested or anything. It's just that there's a clear and present presence okay. of, of Republic what's authority. What's appropriate to carry? You can easily pull off sidearms, but uh, rifles will probably get someone asking you why you're walking around town with a, a long arm. Okay. What about a vibro axe on the back? 
<laughs> melee weapons are melee weapons. Okay. <laughs> and how much encumbrance does your ship have left for cargo, by the way? Uh, we cleared out the cargo. Okay, so you're now down to just your uh, droid? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the big droid, whatever that takes up. Okay, so that's... Because we a... picked up passengers on the last part, not... Uh-huh. Just checking. So you still got your big uh, big battle droid that eats up 35 encumbrance. So how much encumbrance do you have left after 35? Um, I don't this know. Is totally an Uma question. I'm not this hard and I'm tired, so you tell me. That's why you should have taken a nap instead of getting on WoW all day. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Right there with you, Kelly. I am so fucking wiped out today. <laughs> Last night I slept for shit. Uh -huh. I even hit the snooze this morning. I don't usually do that. Uh. Yeah. Snooze. So out of 140 capacity, minus day. 35, right? Yep. We have 105. 135. So the uh, as you guys are walking back and you know Janong's like, "Hey guys, here's a great deal." Mm. So uh, the legal cargo I got is we're transferring food, agricultural foodstuffs, and it's paying 72 credits per encumbrance, which which translates <laughs> to yeah, but we can stuff a lot more in there than. We're really good at packing. I yeah, but this stuff. is this is someone's foodstuffs. They don't want you to just pack up in as much as they that you can. They they want it packed and secured in the cargo containers it comes in. As all of course, you might sudden. find something while we're, you know, enjoying the <laughs> uh, uh, bar. So the so jump that was 135 for each 135 encumbrance and 72 credits per encumbrance. So the job 72. will net you net 9,000. Wow, it's not bad at all. 720. I pulled up my calculator. Yeah. So and it's a jump going towards the inner rim. So it's totally legit. Totally. Totally. But it takes how much space? Uh, they basically have it's. You're getting paid seventy two credits per encumbrance. So per this must be some really cool, like dragon fruit. You know, some kind of expensive foodstuffs. It's probably mm -hmm. grapes that they don't want getting squished. Okay. Okay, so go to this. Xenomorph eggs. <laughs> <laughs> for omelets. So for uh, 97, uh, 9,720 9, credits. Um, okay. That's some good money for just delivering some boxes of fruit. Sure. I mean, we can. Do some easy hauls. Yeah. Do it. Do <sighs> it. <clears throat> and where? And it's being delivered to to the outer rim. It's no inner rim. That's it's. You're going to be inner heading rim. any even closer into the inner rim. Okay. Where specifically in the inner rim? I'll tell you later. How about that? It's okay. the only job you found that was legit. So, <laughs> however. <laughs> There, there is the illicit job that Uma found, where basically you're taking passengers, which is a diplomat and their security guard needing to go on a four-day journey. And basically it's uh, payout's going to be bonus of 500 if you, if you take the job right now, so that way they know they have a ride. And then it's going to be... Another 400 credits for uh, the, the actual transportation. 
So hold it. Uh, was that 900 credits? That's what? 900 total, <laughs> yep. Uh, I think I take the one that's worth seven nine. You know, 9,720. The legit one that's got you going into the inner rim? Yeah. Okay. The inner rim just means more rubble or uh, more... Uh, more Republic. Republic. More yeah. Do we have a problem with Republic? No. no and, I don't. And, and it's not like you're not getting the actual paperwork to legitimately go through borders and stuff, so. Yeah, hey. Okay. It's nice to go check it out. So you're telling Janong to go ahead and check that you guys are taking the job? Yeah, let's take the 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 food cargo. Okay. Yeah. That'll almost pay for what you my implants. Exactly. I mean. And we don't have to deal with cranky passengers. Right. Yeah, them damn dip- diplomats. <laughs> it can it's only a win win to wrong. me. <laughs> For 900. Wow. Yeah, well, we're going to get 10 times that. I mean, like... you totally could have tried, you know, sweet talking them into more, but that's, that's you know. Yeah. They're probably like, oh, it's for the Republic. You should be happy with 900. Some bullshit. <laughs> They're like, whatever. <laughs> it's like, no, sorry. Just put it this way, sorry. We got a better offer for another job. Yeah. I mean, you could always offer, you know, if you can match this, we'll, you know, we'll be happy to take you. If you give <laughs> no, us the 100 other, the times other that you're is- offering. Uh, well, times. <laughs> uh, I mean, the other jobs offering 10 times what you're asking, you know, so. Sorry. If we come back, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're still in need of transportation when we come back, if we come back this way, perhaps. But right now I'm going to have to take the job that's paying more. I mean. She's a business woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> See, okay. When are they expecting to deliver said uh, produce? Uh, produce would probably be by the beginning of tomorrow's <sighs> morning. <sighs> so you guys do have time to kill. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys... so we're going to have a nice. Head to the Weepy Rancor. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Have a nice, relaxed evening. Huh. <laughs> so you guys go to the cantina. I mean, it's 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 your typical cantina that's in every city of every spaceport where every spacer's gone before. Yep. Just uh, have some drinks. Have some, you know, different food. Variety yeah. is the spice of life. Right. I'm sorry. What? I said there's a Max Rebo cover band playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Going we're to the cantina. cantina. I thought we yeah, were there already. Doing well. Yeah. We also got the job lined up. They'll be loading up tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah, that's why, since we have some time to kill. <clears throat> At the cantina, then we went and got a job, and then we're going back to the cantina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically. Well, since Janong was doing the whole, hey, I'm, I'm just finding <clears throat> jobs on Craigslist here. <sighs> you know. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> So what are you guys doing at the cantina? I mean, are you looking for trouble? Are you just sitting down and have drinks and booze and you're ready to go back to the ship? I mean, what what is it you guys want to do? I am I am uh, not looking for trouble, but I am keeping a wary eye out for Manx's associates that might be asking me questions that I don't exactly. want to answer. Okay. So good. we're we're trying to like fly casual. 
Fly Go under ahead the and radar. give me a uh, perception roll. <clears throat> well, what do you know? I get a blue now for those. <laughs> you get a blue now for those? Perception. Oh, God. Because of the scanner. Okay. Oh, no wonder I'm on the wrong tab. As she's constantly whipping out her scanner and scanning things just to scan things. <laughs> what? If you had a scanner, you'd be scanning things too. <clears throat> okay. So, did you add the blue, sweetheart? Mm hmm. Or should I just add it permanently to my. You can add it to your character sheet if you want to add it to your skill. So, that's just uh, a B, One right? B. Yep. One B. Okay, I've added it to my skill. So you can take it off of yours. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, you ready? Yep. It works. Yay. Yeah, and you added a... Yeah, I totally spent <laughs> that when you were talking about your blue dice at the very beginning. So you, you, <laughs> you keep whipping out your scanner and you're like, scanner, find me Manx's people. And the scanner's just like... Bleh. But uh, you, you honestly don't see any of Manx's His crew. associates. He it, didn't have known... a whole lot of people. Well, that's probably why you're not seeing them. Because you're just, you're just not picking up anybody that looks like they know him. And you're avoiding places he goes to. So that's probably a correlation there. Yeah. But you do have a lot of advantage. Mm. Well, let's see. Um... I am going to my next perception. I'm going to add, um, uh, upgrade my or give another blue to myself. Um, and the next one of uh, my uh, crew that is going to roll is going to get a blue. Um, that still leaves two, right? Mm hmm. Um, anybody who is specifically, uh, trying to look like a, a perceptional to recognize me will get a black. Okay. So you're a little incognito, even though you're looking at, pe looking yeah, at everybody, I'm trying, you know, like I've got my color popped up. I'm being nonchalant. <laughs> got the shades on. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool. Super incognito with your scanner. Exactly. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Move along. This is not the droid you're looking for. This isn't <laughs> the uh, Twi'lek and the uh, gank that you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you're totally you looking know, for the other Because that combination of people is so common here <laughs> that people are just like overlooking completely. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, well, she's she's checking the place out, looking for any of her known associates. What are the rest of you guys doing? Chowing on a big, nice, juicy steak and whatever else comes with it. <laughs> Let's put it this way: if you're looking for import export food, this is the place for the foodies to go. Because not only does yeah, the food come nice through. Yeah, it's nice to get something a little different than our shipboard rations. But it can right. fall off the back of the truck here, too. Yeah. Ah, so I can get some Rolothian cuisine. Yes, yes, you can. Yeah. That's nice. Some kind of good juicy steak. Whatever mm -hmm. kind of animal it comes from. It's all pretty good. Two-legged, four-legged. You don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I'm eating and keeping an eye out for any trouble. Okay, so uh, that that's interesting from Melina's point of view. So go ahead and give me your perception check. Say when. Go for it. And remember, you get a blue. Oh, wait. Let me add the blue. Okay, you got a blue. Okay, so when Alina gives the, the, the general, relaxed, casual Jedi glance across the room, you kind of notice that this place is a lot shadier than you first thought it was when you walked in. 
Over in the corner, you see the, the, the spice guy selling his spice. Over at the end of the bar, there's the death stick it's... guy selling his death sticks. And, and you see a couple guys kind of casing out some, some customers. Like, you know, they might roll them out in the alleyway afterwards. But nothing like pings the instant death danger kind of sense. Mm. It all depends if you know you want to get involved in somebody else's troubles. Yeah. And of course, you know, the two of us are like that's normal. <laughs> you are other people's troubles. Welcome yes, to the smugglers. Uh... Right. <laughs> I mean Yeah, I don't I don't think the Captain would appreciate me causing more trouble than I have recently. No, we're, we're we're I would appreciate us flying under the radar right now. I mean we are on a core world. And yeah, what would yeah. you like for your advantages, by the way? Um, let me pay that blue forward. Oh, that's nice. Oh. oh. So what about Janong? Who's probably still scratching his head saying, how can I only find a trip to go deliver fruit to Coruscant? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, know so it's going to Coruscant? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Let me make a note of that. Well, see. Back to your temple, man. You're all set. <laughs> <laughs> um, Janong? Did we lose Janong? No, I'm here. I'm just no. watching weird shit on TikTok. <laughs> oh, that's all that's on there yeah. and that's exactly well, what just... Janong is doing too yeah, <laughs> like, I'm just surfing the web like <laughs> are we doing anything yet are we moving can I hack something no <laughs> no, no okay you can eat have some nice food uh Pack the bar, get us complimentary food. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Do that. That's fucking uh, hilarious. Still let Alina see you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Hack and leave it on uh, Manx's account. Uh, you want me to? <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> no, because then they might... Uh... Check to see where he's at, and I, I don't want to say it's only to practice. bite us in the ass. <laughs> Do you want me to search ooh, anything ooh. while we're here? Ooh, the the two shady guys that are casing people out. I'll I'll whisper to uh, Janong to put our bill on their tab. <laughs> oh, the problem is it might not cover it. They might not have that much money. <laughs> oh, they're they're trying to steal. Uh -huh. They may so, not have a tab. <laughs> well, we'll open one and well, we don't really know their name. Never mind. <laughs> shady <laughs> number one and shady number two. We yeah, I was going to just say that. Thug one, Skullduggery. <laughs> shady two. So I appreciate the uh, um, line of thinking there. <laughs> Great. I'm halfway relaxed. It's like, you know, this is like one of the milder planets that we normally visit and right? I mean, this come is to a pretty for, place. For, for even a smuggler place. So I'm like, yeah, enjoying my food. The place is super cash. <laughs> the law knows better, you know. Most you crimes enjoy. involve a fine to uh, just get out of jail. <laughs> Whose idea was it to come here? The passengers. <laughs> yeah. True. That, that that's tr quite true. Yeah. It's so nice. uh Okay, basically we're just fighting yeah. time well, until screen swipe then from the cantina back to your ship as the delivery droids are coming and delivering these these little comquati dragon fruit kind of looking things, you know. They're coming in their own nice little little boxes and crates that are meant to breathe because you can't contain them because they start to ripen too fast if contained. Yeah, yeah. Well. Wouldn't want that. 
But they're like, hey, you got just just make sure that you you, you don't bruise the fruit. It bruises very oh, delicately. Lord. Oh lord. And no extreme changes in temperature on your ship. <laughs> okay. No and, problem. And, and you ha you don't have any lizard monkeys on the boat on the ship, do you? Uh no. That's yeah, good well, because or not. lizard monkeys are highly allergic to this fruit. Oh shit! Hey, we could take it to Hut Space. <laughs> <laughs> lizard monkeys with flaming diarrhea. <laughs> My vengeance no. is complete. Damn, hey, make that a player character. Race. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the lizard, the lizard monkeys only have an intel of one. I know. But <laughs> they have scattered out the lizard apes. Ah. Uh, if you want the scary ones from Resistance. Right, right. The, the giant lizard monkeys that eat people. Like <laughs> whole... Right, Apparently, right. people eat the spider, the the uh, the monkey version. Yeah, well, but... the Mandalorian. There's mm -hmm. <laughs> one cooking on a spit, and there's one in a cage next to it. Yeah, <laughs> laughing yeah. at the cooked one. <laughs> Foresight <laughs> is not their gift. Yeah, <laughs> but apparently, seeing the humor everything is. <laughs> <laughs> Irony. <laughs> so of course the, the, the right. droids are, you know, loading up your ship, and they're ridiculously slow at it. By the way, oh my god! You know they're taking very precise, slow steps up the ramp, and and gently loading, you know, each crate in a very careful way. You know, so if you want to assist, you can, but they will get kind of fussy if you're not doing it the way they're doing it. I just clean my weapons and oil them up. Really? Keeping an eye. Okay, so after the you know this gruesome two-hour loading process, <laughs> where your ship has this slight <laughs> sweet, sweet bitter smell to it, thanks to the fruit. Oh. That you know you totally worry okay. that hopefully the smell doesn't stick around too long. So you know they basically give you your your pet your you know, transit packet. It's got all your, you know, duty stamps. You know, when you come through the border checkpoint saying, are you bearing fruit? Yes, you are. And here's why. God. Anybody reading through the papers? We're not coming from California to Arizona, are we? Oh, no. You're going from Arizona to California. <laughs> yeah, but let's say we're allowed to sample the wares in there, right? Uh -huh. No. At no point do you see that there. All right. And All on right. the plus side, so, it uh, is only a 17-hour trip, you know, taking the, the into account of the transit stops that you have to go through and get, you know, the ship scanned. Right, right. Okay, so uh, does uh, Janong need to do an astrogation then for that? Since uh, once he's ready to start planning, yep. Do we need to check the crates to make sure that we're actually moving fruit? Well, we don't have a cargo scanner. So wow, Janong, you were just that. on fire, aren't you? You're <laughs> welcome. And Go we ahead do and have a cargo scanner, by the way. Give me back my dark side since you clicked that fast when I said that. My God, you you, <laughs> you are on fire for clicking that like get taking your thing. I was like, nope. As soon as he said go, yeah. I went. Yeah. You're starting to click like Kuma, man. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I to click. I wasn't hesitating. What are you doing with the extra successes you got there? Uh, well, uh, let's see, shave off. Uh, yeah, I was make gonna it... say reduce time. Or make the uh, um, give blues to, or like, well, like less red tape. 
Well, his astrogation, no. that's called smuggling when you do less red tape in your, your, your car. Okay. That's called smuggling. <laughs> I am a smuggler, sorry. <laughs> Need yeah, your you reaction. Wouldn't bypass, you wouldn't have bypassed the uh, uh, inspection station or something? <laughs> no, just get the guy who just like, you know, who's totally not invested and just like, go ahead, you know. I would say smooth sailing, no no pirate troubles or anything like that. Yeah. Shave off time. You. Yep. Okay, but you do have yeah, a threat do. there. Uh. This really takes a strain. Yeah, so I can take a strain for that one threat. No, no, that's okay. You have plenty of time to do your your excavation <laughs> charting. Oh. <laughs> 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 Janong, please make sure you do system scan. I mean, uh, system. Uh, make sure our, our our humidity and temperature on the ship is <laughs> maintained. R three will help you. We don't want any fermented fruit. Exactly. We want. Uh, As I'll just pop in the chat, which one I'm opting for. <laughs> Increased travel time, yeah. Okay, so you guys basically ready to head out? Yeah. Yep. Oh, you gonna <laughs> since you have a cargo scanner, are you gonna cargo scan the cargo just to make Yeah, it? that's it's right. Uh, legit, have R three scan it. Well nobody's put before the, the droids in R3 leave. Yet. Huh? Uh, you have a cargo scanner, it's just a handheld scanner you can walk up and uh, yeah. okay. R three is yet to have his little eyeball installed. Oh, that's yeah. right. Oh, do you want me to do that? Yeah, and, go ahead. Uh, oh, we're in, in flight. We can do that flight. I mean, yeah. yeah. Cargo scanner and. It's totally there. going to be longer than seventeen hours, so you're fine. So, what do you want me to do first? The mechanics for the eyeball? No. Uh, load uh, it up. No, Cargo make scanner. sure that the ship stay. You know, the temperature controlled. So computers. Check the carbon. Okay, well that's oh, that's car. just a you saying you're doing it. You don't have to actually roll okay. for that. That's that's weird. Yeah, I'll, that's I'll okay, check then. Sure that you're saying that. I make sure things are going good with the the temperatures See, and the humidities. And... Everything looks exactly like the little, little the nice little plastic sheet they gave you, saying your fruit and you. Here are some subtle <laughs> things you need to know about fruit. Fruit <laughs> bruises easy. And of course, it gives you the whole temperature range that you should keep it in and humidity. So you just go up to the controls and set the humidity and the temperature for its sweet spot. So, Uma, are you going to let command and control know that you're taking off? Yes. Okay. So uh, immediately you get a little chime message saying that uh, your care package has arrived. My care package? Your care yeah, package. Yeah, the little eyeball. Mr. Oh, Make show the eyeball. That's fine. It's uh, coming oh, up thanks. the turbo lift for you now. Okay. Now, the eyeball only took like two hours the day before, so. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is okay. something to do with Manx. So of course the the turbo lift doors open up at the landing pad and there's this nice cargo container. It's your your typical cargo container. Looks like a heavy duty ice chest, basically. It's a body part. Scan it. <laughs> uh, it just comes up as assorted luxury goods when you scan it. Now what does your it's scanner? It's just exotic do? fruits and stuff. Let's eat it. Yeah, Look. <laughs> okay. So, uh, um, what's in the box. care package? Do you open it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, you guys, are you opening on the ship or outside the ship? See how it's just pretty paranoia. Okay, so you guys go outside. You you click the open button, and before it kinda... we bring it on board, <laughs> I want to see what's in it. 
it opens up and of course you're seeing this like meat cheese and booze you know assortment that totally screams this is what manx would get for himself yeah i know his the taste curry board there's some <laughs> hollow net videos you know oh jeez. And then a couple so, uh, of loose, loose, you know, plastic sheets notes of something that, of course, you'd have to like actually pick them up and look at them. You're probably too paranoid went, to do that. I want to. No, I want to look at the notes. Okay, the notes are basically just the the typical trade, you know, information of what's selling, good where, and how, you know, the uh, current places to avoid thanks to the imperial and republic, you know, confrontations, and you know, a, a basic spread down of. People's tallies of who owes Manx what money. Oh, really? It's in a code that you don't quite recognize. I mean, you could try to do your... Uh, probably streetwise or, or underworld knowledge, but you, do, you don't recognize... the. The, this is his secret code that he doesn't want anyone to know. I mean, it's always possible you could decipher it. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I'll do so. streetwise and I'm going to flip a uh, light side. So. Okay. How quickly I talked them into giving some back. Well, I, I just want to see what's on this. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As Shit. you totally are like flipping this thing around like a road I map, looking at it from every direction. And it just frustrates like, me. And it's very frustrating. So, of course, you know, you're getting this thing about, so, you know, why are Jedi owing Manx? I don't know. This doesn't make any sense! There's some, like, Jedi references you're getting off of it, but you're like, it makes no sense why they would owe money to Manx. I will show it to uh, Alina. Maybe she knows something about it. Yeah, something uh, worth definitely. Why would I know anything about it? Alina <laughs> looks at it. Think that says Jedi. And, and Alina looks at it, and there's like, yeah, there's Jedi masters from like five to a hundred years ago on this piece of paper. Okay, that's bizarre. <laughs> Obviously, he picked a good cipher. Somebody right. who's a right hand person can't even make a cipher out. All right, well, almost... I'll, I'll try and figure it out later. It's yeah, almost yeah. like Uma got her paranoia from him. <laughs> it's almost like she's more of a daughter than she ever wants to realize. <laughs> Bite your tongue. The ghost of Manx says, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> okay. uh, definitely worth holding on to. So, we'll so you guys, are you, are you, the crate you up. taking the crate on board? Uh, yep. Sure. Okay. Yeah, all the wine go to waste. I mean, actually, can't can we just scan it to make sure the there's stuff? no, uh, no like, like trackers or off of it? Yeah. I'm sure if you want to do a computer check. Please do. Manx was a tricky bastard. You ready? Yep. Well, I wouldn't be worried about Manx. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it could be somebody looking for Manx. I mean, maybe Manx owes people something. I mean, oh, I'm sure he does. Oh, trust me, I'm sure he does. Oh, there's always money going both ways. So let's see now. How many advantages that? Uh, so forty. <laughs> that would be classified as a fuck ton. <laughs> After my last roll, get that plus one blue that I paid for. That that was at the bar though. Remember, we screen, <clears throat> screen swipe since then. Yeah, but it's just... <laughs> so, right, so, I would like to know all the information about this box. This cargo <laughs> box, you know, it's got <sighs> lots of different DNAs on it. It's been handled by lots of different people and droids. It's got little different levels of radiation, so you can tell that this cargo container has traveled all over the place. But... You do notice that inside this, this cargo container, there is a passive tracker that when you send a signal to it, the tracker turns on. Currently, the tracker is in, in its off mode. 
Maybe it's the where did I hide my keys thing, but uh, it, you do know for sure that there is a, a tracker on this. Not like a standard cargo tracker. Like, this is my box. I want to know where my box is. This is like... This is the higher track. end of that. So okay. basically somebody who wants to definitely not lose their, their suitcase, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe out? somebody who wants to screw you when the Republic scans your ship and the signal goes off. Yeah. yeah. It, it could it be either way. Take it out and... Uh, can I pull it out? <laughs> uh, you can totally do a mechanics whip out your torch and cut a hole through the cargo container. I mean, it'll obviously or appear that you We just empty it. the cargo and leave the container. You could do that. that. Yeah, let's do that one. We'll, like, tuck it in the corner behind some shit. All right. Well, this is like a really nice landing pad. There's very little refuse up here. It's it's mostly just like the cables and you know the charging and uh, refueling station. Well, now they're gonna have a crate as refuse. <laughs> okay, so you guys basically take take the swag but leave the box. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Somebody will recover it. So right. you guys taking off? Yeah. Yeah, if we got clearance. Clearance. Yeah, they're like once once you received your package, that was the last thing they had there. So yeah, you have clearance to go. Right. Okay, so Uma, thanks to the the beautiful command and control for traffic here, give me a piloting check. Okay. As half the piloting is done automatic, so they're just like, wow. Seriously. As immediately when you start to take off, some little Look jackass, some little jackass on a speeder bike kind of sideswipes you, doing two whole trauma to the ship. Fucker! Scratched our new ship. As you see the little hover cycle kind of like flip and do this little back flippy thing, as he may crash and die, you never know. I hope he does. Yeah. Well, saves me from having to shoot him with the turret. <laughs> in, in fact, command and control sends you this little thing of do not worry, you are not at fault. Uh, the the driver of such and such vehicle will be fined if they survive the crash. As you see this little, the motorcycle went flying <laughs> off with smoke trails as it's spinning in the air. And like plowed into a side of a building. You don't think he will live long or prosper. Good. After all, new ship. Chenong, when you get a chance, <laughs> fix my baby. <laughs> it's got character now. Exactly. As the little maintenance droid's like, I told you, you should have got the pay job. Kalisha, baby, are you okay? <laughs> okay, so you basically it followed... wouldn't help me if I'd gotten scratch after I got the paint job. Oh, the paint job would have kept you from getting scratched. See. Oh, Pucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys heading out to the hyperspace routes. It's you know your ship gets scanned at your point of line, and you've got the hey here's my, here's my permits. Tap in the little data stick so it transmits your records. Congratulations. Now I do want to ask, what is your transponder saying? Yeah. Um, what is your ship? And write it down in your notes. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Should we change the transponder or keep the one that we had? <laughs> uh, Opinions, please. I'm tired. <laughs> basically, what does the transponder what? say when anyone pings you? And what's the name of your ship for the record? Uh, right. the Kalisha. Is that what we took the order under as well? Yeah. That's what so. we changed the ship's name to. Okay. okay. Well, Just, you know. Yeah. Because this is all up and up, so they, they basically have your ship's information, so in case they gotta sue you or something, they, they, they got your ship's info. Right. Well, they have some info. <laughs> well, it's illegal to tamper with your transponder, so what they have must be illegal. The correct information. Right. Exactly. 
<laughs> so, so what does your transponder say right now? I mean, are you, uh, your blank ship out of blank? You tell me. Uh, I don't know where. Okay, when we got it, it was originally called the Widowmaker. Um, but I don't know where it was for. You know, home port was. Well, you probably don't want to use the one that was used by a smuggler king. No, so, so no, exactly. You so, make it now. so just make up what you want. Um. Okay, how about trans? We uh we, we picked it up uh, on the sheet. <laughs> uh, we picked it up where? The sheet. Wookie home world. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, so the ships from Kashyyyk, the the yet the Wookie home world. But what is the ship? Is it the same ship name? It's the Kalija. Okay. Just Kalija, not the Kalija. Isn't that the name we agreed on? Kalija, yeah. yeah. I'm butchering names, but I just wanted to know what Republic Records will show the ship is. Uh, yes, you are totally butchering Kalija. Yes, you are. I'm butchering Kashyyyk, too. <laughs> I got too few E's, because apparently Spellchecker is like seriously being angry with me for typing it. <laughs> so, uh, as you get the scan, you've got Janong's hyperspace coordinates, you slide the bar, and you... <laughs> And you kind of get kind of concerned it's taking a little longer than it should, you know. As you immediately pop out and you're just slightly off line of the buoys that you should be in line to get into, you know, to, to make the next part of your jump. <laughs> as you proceed to notice that as soon as you jump out, you're kind of glad you're not in line. Because there seems to be some kind of space kerfuffle going on with blaster fire going back and forth. It doesn't look like oh, an Imperial attack or a Republic attack. It looks to you more like the local cops shooting at a couple well-armed ships, probably pirates. Great. But thankfully, because of Janong's missed jump, you, you are avoiding the, the kerfuffle. You're kind of watching it from an outsider's point of view. You're welcome. <laughs> Until I say, Janong, do you want to hit your sensors? Mm, sure. Why not? Oh, let's see. Computers. Are you ready? Computer. <laughs> oh. Looks like uh, our Jedi doesn't want you to screw this up. Yeah, but see, now I'm probably going to screw it up, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. All right, go for it. As you blast your computer sensor sweep out, and you're immediately seeing, like, you know, this is like Robotech. The sensor screen is just in, just blasting with all this information. As you know that there are three crafts, which apparently, according to what the police vehicles, you know, are saying, are that they're pirates, because obviously they're attacking two or three of the ships in the in the the, car, the queue. Basically, they rammed into them and must be trying a boarding action. And the police are basically saying, "Everyone, stay back. Let us do what we need to do." As they're ion blasting the shit out of these pirate ships, and the pirate ships are, of course, using everyone else as uh, cover. So they can hopefully not get shot. And they seem to be doing a good job of using other ships as cover to make their escape. Bastards. <laughs> Don't use my ship. Yeah, okay, you, so is this you, the... Ex this is what adds to our uh, this travel This is what's time. adding to your travel time. Is that Basically, there's a lockdown going on right now. But it's okay because you're not even in the line yet. So that's kind of a good thing. And uh, you clearly see that there there is another pirate craft out there. Kind of between you and where the police are doing their thing. 
They're kind of like just staying out there dead in the water because you rolled really, really well. And uh, you kind of sense that the, the ship that's out there is kind of trying to play possum to not be noticed and just behaving and sending out the occasional radio communication. Hmm. Yeah. It's almost like they might be directing the whole pirate attack. I was going to say, we got my brand new jammer. <laughs> okay, let's try it out. We can get involved. Okay, I'm going to the turret. Uh, wow. Well. <laughs> Just hey, right. we're trying to speed this along. The Protus only has a, so much shelf life. Right there, uh, like jump. Uh... I was gonna say, what's what's Alina jumping light side points? Alina, sorry, <laughs> she's like, ah! that's just just for for jamming them. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I I I go getting the ventral turret. Just in case. Okay, so Zerk <laughs> crawls in the turret thinking, ah, shit, I'm going to have to shoot somebody. And um, and so how does your jammer work there, Janong? Well, I get to check, check between grape or strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, jam the senses. Uh, raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I'm freshly out of raspberry, that's why... <laughs> It's time oh. for the dreaded marmalade. No, marmalade. Jim, marmalade is citrus. Um, uh, but Jim is partial to strawberry, so if you use that one, it might be, you know. <laughs> so so how does your jammer work? So to block, well, must use a computer check. <laughs> As determined by the GM, the closer the jammer to the source, the harder the check will be. Mm -hmm. So, Thank I you. click computers, and then you tell me, yeah. Oh, that's right. Alina already upgraded for you. Yes. Okay. I like how she throws it back at me, like, no, no, sir. No light, no dark side point for you. I've got your upgrade in there. <laughs> hey, I'm just making sure you get your point back. Come on now. <laughs> Triumph. So, um, yeah, you turn your jammer on really quick. It's almost like you had it ready to go. So what do you want to do with your advantages? Oh, six advantages? Yes, sick advantages. Incidents. Um, Go crazy now. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a jammer, like, <laughs> it doesn't affect, the, it would just affect him, right, the one vehicle? Okay, for, for, for your triumph or three advantages, I will definitely give you that you're only jamming the pirate frequencies. And yeah. they can't see who's jamming them. No, no, well, that would be an additional use. Okay, so what's the, what's the first thing you do? So, with, for three of them, it just affects the... Uh, the pirate frequencies? Yeah, the pirate frequencies. The triumph is, they don't know it came from us... And that's, then, a, that's a good thing. Yes, it's a very good thing. And then you have thing. three other advantages. Uh, yeah, it's strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> Can we shave off some time on our next... When we finally do get to go? Uh, no, because that still waits for all this crap to be cleared up for you guys. Um, Let's do... <clears throat> Let's give the cops some bonus whatevers. Let them... <sighs> so you you basically communicate with the cops. Yeah, we'll do we'll do that so they can they can speed this up so we we're not too late. Okay, so basically Janong is helping out the popo, making things go smooth. You know, the pirates immediately just drop out of all coordination that they had, and it's just total anarchy at this point. But if that's in the cops' favor, and of course the spacers' favor, because 
they can independently shoot the pirates that are trying to get near their ships, and the cops are doing their thing of coordinating. And, and immediately you guys get this nice, clean... The cops catch the pirates. The ship that was behind you turns off and takes off real fast, realizing, ah, shit, the jig is up. And then you guys basically get a kudos message from the local law enforcement because Janong basically dropped a little information on the whole, hey, we've jammed the pirate frequencies. Don't hope you don't mind. And there's another ship over behind us. Yeah. Nice. Look at us good people. I know, no, we're such good people. And they give you that nice little uh, electronic sticker that you're friend of the force. <laughs> it's good in case you get pulled over. In yeah. this configuration of your ship. So we, so we got a, uh, we support the police uh, union uh, sticker now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, the goodwill comes in many forms. So you guys are getting ready to jump to your, you know, get back in the queue and jump now that the, the kerfuffle has been settled. And uh, Uma yawns just as she gets up to the next jump point and hits her hyperspace. <laughs> and everything shakes and the stars rip forward. And that's a good place to wrap it up there. Right? <laughs> and we're going to yell at Uma to get more sleep like next that. time. Yes, I know. I was trying to get those mounts. All the while. Uh, and no any mounts. XP? Uh, so you guys get 5 XP. Nice. If you'd opted to start more danger or shenanigans, or the dice would have been better for, on my side, you could have gotten 10. That's <sighs> yeah, alright. We got. I got legs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then Zerk says, and the best part? They let me take home a doggy bag. <laughs> <laughs> and he whips okay, out the, I, the spare legs. I am going to have to call it a night. Um, so, uh, uh, good night, all. Totally good night. put the spare yeah, legs night. in the refrigerator. You never know when you need some spare DNA to throw around somewhere. <laughs> right? You find a really big rock <laughs> and you put the legs <laughs> under the rock sticking out. Oh, he must have been squished. <laughs> the things you nice. can do with legs. Nice. So, Jim, make sure you put all four of those light side points into our next roll. <laughs> all right, so good night. Good and of night. course, you know, the question is what does Alina want to do when she gets to Coruscant? All right. the Jedi have been kicked off the planet. Oh, are they? Oh, and we're at that time frame. This, this okay. is the point of the, the, the Cold War, yep. So okay. uh, all the Jedi were sent away, and she's sneaking back home. Nice. Boy. You could totally try sneaking back into the temple, right? Sure, you might get some good stuff over there. All those uh, pat dead Padawans, you know, they might have... <laughs> <laughs> yep, I could uh, try to sneak back to the temple, that's true. <laughs> this might happen. I suppose it depends on how Jim rules on the uh... obligation. Hopefully, it comes up with something good. It's been too dry lately. I know you haven't rolled shit. Like I said, I'm still amazed. No ganky business yet. So <laughs> it's gonna be bad when it comes up. Yeah. All yeah. of a sudden, the ganker will be like, "We heard about a gank working with a twilight." <laughs> Even the bird is chiming in there. Right. Right. <laughs> so. Alrighty, guys. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good experience from the last uh, last round. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, yeah. Make sure you I, spend it. Oh, I know. I spent it, and it's on. Uh, um, I now only take one. Destiny point or dark side or, or uh, light side to activate my uh, last uh, one standing. Oh, nice! Instead of two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two is mighty expensive if everyone rolls poorly. You know, like today well, it was no are problem. Using them and, well, yeah, that and it's like you know people are using it and all of a sudden it's like shit's hitting the fan and I'm like, oh, I need to. Oops. 
We don't have two. <laughs> <laughs> so now, as long as I got one, I can wipe out all the little, poor little tiny baddies. <laughs> So. Do you have any interest in um, IV anime core book? Uh, I, I've actually supported its Kickstarter. What? Awesome. I was actually thinking of supporting it myself. Hmm. Yep. Uh, that was one that I had to give it a shot just to give it a shot. I mean, <laughs> how much fun would that campaign be? <laughs> Make it all crazy anime style. Yep. Anime. This is really general, though. So, yep. I mean, Kelly yeah, walks in the room and she's like, What are you guys talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what am I missing? <laughs> <laughs> All righty, guys. I'm going to log off since she's turning on the fan and throwing things at me. <laughs> All right. Later. Good night. Thanks. Bye.